We'll now have a couple of screencasts that look at decision analysis. We'll start by looking at how to incorporate constrained resources into decision making. We'll include examples of whether or not to accept a special order, whether to make or buy a part, whether to continue or drop a division. Our first example looks at a constrained resource problem. The issue here is constant manufacturing makes three products, X's, N's, and Z's. Each product uses a machine. The machine has a limited availability during the week. So the question is, how much of each product should constant make? One way to solve the problem would be to set it up as a linear program. If you know how to do this, then you could use the solver algorithm in Excel, or perhaps if you have access to specialized linear programming software like Lindo, you could solve the problem that way. But we're going to take a somewhat simpler approach to this problem. We'll need to determine the contribution margin for a machine hour. The first step in doing that is to figure out the contribution margin for each of the three products. Calculating contribution margin isn't too tough. It's just the sales price minus the variable cost. So the only work we have to do here is to determine the variable cost for each of the three products. As you can see, variable cost depends on the direct materials, the direct labor, and the overhead in this example. Once we have the variable cost calculated, determining the contribution margin is straightforward. Next, we want to check whether or not we actually do have a machine hour constraint. And here, we're going to look at the machine hours, each of the x's, N's and Z's that we manufacture use and the demand for those products. Once again, this is a fairly straightforward exercise in arithmetic. And as you can see, when we add up the demand for each of these products and the time it takes to make each unit of the product, we see that if we attempted to manufacture all the units demanded, we would use 230 machine hours while only 105 machine hours are available. So what this means is that we have to choose which of the products to make. How are we going to do that? Well, given that our objective is to maximize contribution margin per machine hour, let's determine what the contribution margin per machine hour is for each of the three products. And we do that by taking the contribution margin per unit and dividing by the number of machine hours per unit. This tells us that ends are the most profitable product when we consider them on a machine hour basis. So our first choice is to make 1,500 ends. And this requires 60 machine hours. So we still have 45 machine hours left. Our next choice are X's. So we start to manufacturing X's. And if we manufacture 2,000 X's, that will take 20 machine hours. Therefore, 80 machine hours have been used and 25 machine hours remain. Finally, we will turn production to Z's. Now, in this case, the arithmetic is pretty straightforward. So calculating that we have 25 machine hours left is not too difficult. But if we wanted to do this more formally, the math here is not that hard. We would just solve for the question mark. And as mentioned earlier, there are 25 hours remaining, given that each Z requires 0.05 hours, i.e. we can make 20 Z's per hour on the machine, then 25 hours implies that we can manufacture 500 Z's. 
At this point, we've run out of machine time until the next week. An interesting question that we might consider is what would an additional 10 machine hours be worth to constant? In order to solve that problem, you have to ask what would constant do with the time? Well, the only product for which there is unfulfilled demand are Z's, and so it would take the 10 machine hours and start to manufacture Z's. How many Z's could it manufacture? Once again, the calculation is not too difficult. With 10 hours of time, they could manufacture 200 Z's. And since each Z provides $18.50 in contribution margin, the 10 additional machine hours would be worth $3,700 in additional contribution margin.